were you uh, home in Ontario during Ontario Craft Brew Week? Or did you get out for any events? I do some stuff on Talk 1010 with John right. Tory. It's uh, the AM radio station here. On Fridays, I get about 15 minutes. And I took in the uh, Muskoka, the, the Mad Tom IPA. I don't know if you've tried that yet. Yeah, actually, I quite liked it. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a pretty darn good beer. I, I think they did really well on that. And then I took in some of the the Welly One Off from Wellington. Right, we went down for that on Father's Day as well. Oh yeah, yeah, I couldn't get there. I, Harry dropped some off at my office. Yeah, I think actually as a result of your interview, they uh, they had a bit of a run. We are interested in beer now, right? In university, I made a conscious decision with me and my group of buddies. I said we should start spending five or ten cents more a bottle. And we moved to Upper Canada at the time. Yeah, that was a great brewery. We made that decision. And it, and it felt good. It felt exclusive. It felt like you were growing up a bit. It felt like, you know, all that shit. And, you know, and, but these, these guys are great. Three years ago, I was up in North Bay for a, a beer event. And I was, I was in a room with all of them. Cremor had just gone to Molson, right? Like just, it was like two weeks earlier. And at the end of the night, we were all in one room. And it, uh, it was Jason from Cameron's and it was, Harry and it was uh, Jeremy from Cremor. It was uh, Church Key, uh, John Graham. And it was funny because the pizzas came in and everybody was like sort of, you know, tired and hungry. Nobody ever looked into the into the coolers when they grabbed. It was like whatever was available at the end of the night, they just sort of, you know, strong armed the table, threw it into coolers, and we all went upstairs to this one room. And they were just, they were happy to drink each other's beer. Yeah, you know, I find was, that like. Definitely with the Ontario Craft Brewers, there is that camaraderie. There's a lot of more collaboration, things like that. And yeah. you see that a lot in the States, too, because they have a pretty huge craft beer market. And they, they they really were the ones that they were responsible for get, you know, getting it going again, really. For sure. You, know, and you got and you, the irony in that, right? You tell people, because you know, people go, oh, American beer sucks. You know, it's like, well, you know, sweeping generalization, a lot of it does. But for sure. yeah, no, I mean, how many great fucking beers do they have down in the U.S., right? You, uh, I mean, you've sort of been part of a resurgence of the appreciation of beer. I mean, where do you think the uh, appreciation of beer is sort of compared maybe historically to the appreciation of wine? Do you think it'll ever get parity or is beer always going to sort of be the... I don't uh, think it wants to be. I don't think it wants... I, I don't think it should. I mean, it's not to say beer is like Utopia or like, you know, you know Garrett at yeah. Brooklyn, right? Like, yep. I mean, beer can be held in the same esteem and regard. I don't think it wants to be. You know, God, I manage you know, we got a Riddell beer glass, and you could only, you know, I, I this, the same things apply, right? You know, we, you, you, I mean, you can come up with adjectives, descriptors on how to taste. You know, the the glass and the shape can deliver it to the certain part of the tongue. Which you know will will uh, enhance or you know the uh, experience of your beer. I mean, beer pairs with food, but I think it beers like casual and wine was almost too snooty, right? Like True. wine's trying to become more casual because it was too intimidating. Beer was seldom that intimidating. I, like, I think uh, some of the accessibility comes from the fact that you know for an extra five dollars on a six pack, you can get the best beer in the world, as opposed to a wine where you, you'd have to spend $1,000 to get that. Oh, yeah, you got to read a book, and you got to be worried about, you know, the vintage and the year. and Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's fun to have a small uh, niche or, you know, in the category of, of, of in, in, the brand, you know, in, the, in the world of beer, where some of that stuff can exist. But that's definitely not what beer was ever made to do. It wasn't beer's goal or beer's function. Wine wasn't either, right? Like no, lobster I, lobster was, was bycatch. Lobster was the poor man's food before people got savvy. Like, you know, wine wine was you know, farmers make wine. It's 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 grapes and yeast and boom, you know, and then somebody got really fucking smart about it. You go to France, they don't they don't drink the vintages, they drink great table wine. You know, out of out of little sure. short stubby glasses. And it, that's the shit, man. Like, you know, I love when I go to a wine, uh, a winery, and the first thing I do with the winemaker is have a beer because he's a farmer. You know, if he pulls out a, if he pulls out stemware and a good old dusty bottle, I'm going like the, he's marketing me. If if he's having a beer with me, he's getting to know me first. Right, for sure. You know, beer is that's beer's ultimate lake. We can we can idolize it and we can we can Stephen Beaumont it and we can all that all that shit. But at the end of the day, we, like we need a platform, we need a level, we need a comparison level. But I think the more we try and make it uh, elitist or snobby or 
you know, intimidating. I, I think we're working against what it should be. I uh, I have to say that I think we both agree. We we uh, we went to school during the partly during the years when wine was you, you, everyone was supposed to drink wine. You were supposed to appreciate wine, and it just never uh, never felt right. And uh, beer always just felt a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I was, I, I'm a bit older than you guys, probably. Um, you know, when I it, wine was red or white, you know, yeah, and, and a lot of wine came from boxes. You know, it was in the foil bag in the box, and people would go, hey, "I'll have a glass of wine," and you go, red or white. <laughs> That's that was your choice. Yeah. And I was doing it to, when I was going out on dates with girls because I wanted to get laid, and you know, it just it <laughs> looks more uh, impressive when you're drinking wine instead of you know. What you're drinking at the pub, which is just you know a pint of beer or a pitcher of beer out of plastic. I, I have a healthy respect for beer, but I you know at the end of the day, you know when I go down to New York tomorrow for a month, I drink with some of the best chefs you know in the city, country, in the planet, in the world, whatever. I drink with great chefs. I drink a lot of Jägermeister and PBR. You know, and, there, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's time and place for everything. You know. I'll drink some. I'll drink some. Uh, you know, number one from Brooklyn, and you know, you'll have a proper meal, and you'll sit down. And we'll, I'll do both ends of the spectrum, and I would hate to see beer lose one of those. It can be. It can be held up like that, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna knock the bottom end of it either. I mean, there's some sucky beer out there, right? I don't like this lime phase we're going through. I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, I'm with you there. Oh, it's horrible. Fake lime, little bit, little bit of metal taste. With the Thirsty Traveler and some of your uh, exploits with that, were there, were there certain beers for you that really stood out? That you thought, wow, this is some pretty, pretty tasty stuff? Yeah, well, we had some cedar, uh, cedar tip beer in Alaska, um, which was really neat. It was the first time I really I, I was exposed to sort of you know, cedar versus, say, hops, right. which was what traditionally they were using up, uh, up that far north, right, because it, it, it's available. And it was just uh, right. experienced guys, you know. I mean, they, you know, they were getting all their their malts in. They were, uh, the it was the uh, Alaska Brewery Company. Well, the whole the whole state of Alaska is is a bit different, right? They just like their speed and their style. The brewery just works at a snail's pace. Everybody's really easy going. The door on the passenger side of the delivery truck doesn't open because it's broken and they can't get it fixed. And you know, but when it comes to the, to have a guy just hold the you know the chocolate malt in his hand, and he's going just smell it. Now eat some, you know, like just so passionate about what they're doing, right? That can be infectious, right? For sure. Oh, totally. I think I think when when you, when you've had your when you've had your you know epiphany, your or 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 whatever, you know, when you're enlightened on something and that you want to make it your life. I mean, how many guys have have left their everyday regular jobs to follow a passion that's as sort of you know simple? Simple is the wrong word, but. I'll use simple and you can, as simple as beer, you know, four ingredients, you know, like the Ryan Holtz, like just, it can be alchemy, but it doesn't have to be. And, uh, I, I think if, if you've had that experience, you know, that, that, and you want to make it your life, it's come from somewhere, you know, it didn't come from a, a plastic jug of beer at the seeps probably. 